conclude in my remaining minutes with a few stories that came out of this horrendous raid that occurred in northern Ohio. Maria Sandra works at this greenhouse and was present the day of the raid. She recalls clocking in at 7 a.m. These folks work hard. She walked to her van to get her sunscreen and gloves when she heard vehicles slamming on the brakes in the gravel. The officers got down with large weapons, so she figured they were looking for a dangerous criminal. Then she says, I realized it was immigration. Two men came up behind me, screaming at me to walk. I told them, I have my ID and my social security card. They screamed louder, walk. I picked up my phone and they told me to put it away, that I couldn't use it. I was so scared seeing how they pushed people and put us together like animals on their way to a slaughterhouse. The officers tied everybody up. I kept saying, I have my documents. I'll show them to you. But they ignored me. They began separating us into two lines. Everybody that was white was let go. I was there so long that I had to use the bathroom. They refused to let me go until many others had to go. We were taken, tied, to the restroom, accompanied by an officer with a big gun. I kept asking, why are you doing this? I have all my documentation in my van. They asked me, are you a citizen? And I said, yes. They laughed at me. I had never felt so humiliated. I can still hear everybody crying. When they finally ran my social, they escorted me to my van, still tied. They told me to leave, and I said, how can I drive with my hands tied? Another officer came with some scissors to untie me and actually cut my wrist I pulled away in pain, and he got angry and said, Why did you move? I said, Because you cut me. I stormed out of there in fear. I have never experienced anything like this in my whole life. I was treated like a criminal with no voice or rights. Gloria Reyes works at Corso's and was there the day of the raid. Gloria's co-worker who was arrested asked Gloria to drop off her lunch bag at home and check on her children. Gloria's co-worker, whose name she'd prefer not to give out because of fear of the children being taken, has three children, a little boy, uh, a little girl, and a baby. Gloria went to that house, and when she knocked, she said she could hear them behind the door shushing each other. Gloria says, I knocked for a while and just kept saying, son, open up, I won't hurt you. I just came to drop off your mom's lunch. The eldest finally opened the door but wouldn't let me in. He broke down crying and asking questions I couldn't answer because I didn't know where any of them were. I tried to calm him down and said everything would be okay. I went back to take the children food, but nobody answered the door. I don't know if they're okay. Those children only have their mother. I have been here in this community 42 years, and I have never seen anything like this. Families are being broken without caring of what would be of the children. Working is not a sin, and all those people just wanted to better themselves. We work hard, sometimes taking shifts from 7 a.m. till midnight. What the government is doing is wrong. People are suffering. The American children are suffering. Another woman writes at Corso's that she escaped the raid and she wants to remain anonymous because she fears that she might be hunted down. She said, I never expected anything like this to happen. When I saw them coming, I ran and I ran and ran until I hid under a bed of flowers and I buried myself under the dirt and cried in silence. All I could think about was my kids. I have three. A lot of us have small children who need us. My skin itched of the mud, stuck to my body, drying. Is this America? Is this America? I prayed to God for strength. I hid there for eight hours in fear of being taken or that maybe someone would come back. I still feel like I'm suffocating there. When I came out, I asked someone who also works there for a ride. The entire complex was silent. Lunch boxes were left everywhere. There was a void. As I got home, I was scared to get out of the car. I looked around the neighborhood to make sure there were no officers around. Walking through the door and hugging my son was a relief. However, I hurt when he asks me, what's going to happen now? I don't know what to say. All I know is I have to provide for them. I'm alone. I don't have a dime to my name. If I had a voice, I'd tell the government that we don't hurt anymore. We are humble people. 
who are just working to better our lives. I tell them to put their hands on our hearts and realize they're hurting people. Children are suffering. Please stop. A young girl, age 13, who resides in a place named Willard. Her mother was taken in the raid. She said, I was still in bed when I could hear someone banging on the door. Right after, there was banging on my bedroom window, so I got up to see what was going on. As I opened the door, my neighbor, in panic and tears, asked where Mom was. I said, she's working. Why? She asked, had I spoken to her? I began to say no when she interrupted me by saying she'd been arrested at her job along with many others from our town. My neighbor said, call your dad. I was so confused and even dumb because I didn't know what to do. I couldn't even remember my dad's phone number. My dad didn't answer, so I panicked. I cried on the floor, hugging a picture of my mom. All I could do was cry and hope it wasn't true. Not her. My father eventually walked through the door and just hugged me tight, and we cried. I have little sisters, and they kept asking, Mommy, Mommy? I just say she's at work. It was even harder to tell my little brother I played a song, I'm not alone, and I prayed and prayed. That night, my sisters wouldn't go to bed, insisting to wait for Mom. I went to sleep at 4 a.m. just thinking every time my mom gave me advice and how I wish I had listened every time. My dad didn't go to work the next day. I think everybody's scared. Everyone says, be strong. It's going to be okay. But all I can think about is, when will I see my mom again? When will I hug her again? Now I have to take care of my sisters. But looking at mom's empty chair at the table just doesn't seem fair. I hope the American people who are listening tonight think about these human beings that honestly don't deserve to be caught between our government, the Mexican government, the governments of the southern tip of North America. NAFTA and CAFTA have to be renegotiated, and workers of this continent have to be respected. We have to treat people like human beings, and there must be a legal system that protects them all. God bless America, and God bless this continent. I yield back. Gentle lady yields. Members are admired.